Thank you, Gail. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. So I'd like to say that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, too loud, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Uh, the United Church of Christ, we have two sacraments, and both of those sacraments will be shared with us today. We have the Sacrament of Communion being our first Sunday of August, and we also have Jack Lawrence, who is going to be baptized. Uh, baptism is, is a wondrous, wondrous mystery. Um, it doesn't matter if you're two years old or 82 or 102. Uh, when you are baptized, the church says something transforms within you and you are made into a Christian. It doesn't mean that someone who is not baptized is not loved by God, not recognized by God. It just means that you have made the choice uh, to be recognized as a Christian. And so that is a very special day in Jack Lawrence's life, uh, the life of all these beautiful people who have gathered to share in that wondrous occasion, and also in the life of this church. And so with all of that said, and realizing that it's a summer Sunday, and we have to be out of here at noon or else I get in trouble, let's move forward with our opening hymn in candle lighting. The candle lighting hymn is Red Hymnal number 353, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. turn to our bulletins for our call to worship. Come into the presence of Jesus and be fed. Enjoy the spiritual nourishment of word, communion, and community. Incline your ears to hear what God teaches and strive to, and strive to live accordingly. Seek the encouragement of the Spirit's loving presence. We gather to receive Jesus' blessings and to share them with others, seeking refuge in a frightening and confused world. Jesus is near to all who call on his name and imitate his example. Let us offer Jesus our praise through lives well led. Now coming together as this congregation in person, those joining us online and later those who will be joining us via FCAT, our unison prayer. We are in awe before you, O God, 
because you have provided for us in rich abundance. The earth is full of your blessings. There is beauty and bounty all around us from the work of your hands. You have surrounded us with everything we need to live pleasant and meaningful lives if we would all but look beyond our own wants. Help us to see our needs without ignoring those of others, especially those who are suffering. Help us to realize that abundance is an unworthy reward if it must impoverish others. Open our eyes to see the blessings of sharing with one another so that together we may build communities of mutual support. To do so, strengthen our faith and our trust in you. Let us realize that we are not alone in the world, that we have the blessings of God and each other in our lives. Amen. So, for the uh, children who may be watching us later on FCAT or for the young ones here, and God bless you young parents, that's a lot of energy. That's a young person's job, man. Good for you. Um, but we're going to hear later the gospel story of Jesus' miraculous feeding of thousands, uh, possibly 10,000 people. Matthew is the most extravagant of them, all, all the gospel stories about this miraculous feeding with 10,000 people. So yesterday morning, Sharon and I, my wife, we went to a Tanglewood for the rehearsal for this afternoon's concert at 2 o'clock. Uh, I also listened last night on CRB out of Boston. They had the uh, Hollywood movie night, and that's really popular. And they had to delay the concert because so many people were trying to get into Tanglewood that there was a backup, and they had to delay the concert. There was like 18,000 people there yesterday at last night's concert. There might have been a couple thousand when we were there in the morning. And Sharon, she overdoes the packing of, of a picnic lunch. And so if it's just the two of us, she'll pack enough food for maybe six or eight people. And so if we're sitting at a blanket 
and she comes prepared to feed the two of us. And maybe there's somebody over on this blanket, and they're watching, and we can maybe catch their eye that they're looking at something we have, and they're interested. We have enough to share with the person on this blanket, because Sharon is Polish, and you've got to feed everybody if you're Polish. And so, anyway, they're, they're in a little picnic basket, we've got enough for us, and maybe on this other blanket. I don't know if there might be enough for the person on this blanket. There's not enough for the person over here. There's definitely not enough for maybe a thousand people or two thousand people. But that's what the story today is in the gospel, and it's made a, it's a perfect story for children. So the, 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 the disciples and Jesus are trying to get away for a little vacation. They're trying to get away. It's been busy. They're trying to get a break. So they only make enough provisions, and they're meager provisions for the 13 of them. You know, five loaves and two fish. And so, well, hello there. How are you? You ready for baptism? Yeah? Okay. All right. He's excited. That's good. What you want? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. We don't get that a lot here. <laughs> so, so um, the, the 13 of them go across, and they're, they're ready for just a small little picnic. And the next thing you know, there's thousands of people out there, literally 10,000 people. And so the disciples are saying to Jesus, send them away. You know, uh, they got to go to the villages and find something to eat. We can't feed them. Jesus surprises the disciples, turns to them, and says, give them something to eat yourselves. And they're saying, how are we going to give them something to eat? We've got five loaves and two fishes. Jesus says, give them something to eat yourself. So they give Jesus the five loaves, the two fishes. And Jesus is grateful for this. And so he honors God. He praises God for the meager offering. He says the blessing, and then they share it. And we don't know. The Bible isn't clear. Is that a miracle because Jesus multiplied the five loaves and two fishes? Or is it a miracle because other people saw that these people of meager stuff gave what they had, and so they all started giving the meager belongings that they had, and there was more than enough. But either way, it's the miracle that Jesus brings about in us generosity. And what I wanted to tell the children is that with Jesus, all things become possible. Things that we can't imagine. How are we going to do this? With Jesus, all things become possible. And that was the message of the five loaves and the two fish in feeding 10,000 people, that in Jesus, everything is possible. And our special music by Gail today is My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
Well, thank you, Gail. And Gail knew in advance what our gospel was, and she tied that hymn in there perfectly with that. And thank you for that, Gail. So we're now having our chance to offer our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns, our prayers for others. And I'd like to begin, as we do here, with prayers for Ukraine. It's just such a tragedy that over there so many people are dying and being injured and so much wasted with all that war destroying everything around it. So we pray for peace there and we pray that somehow uh, justice may reign there. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. We also offer prayers for all in the world who are suffering through historic heat and climate change, including even those in our very own local communities. Also, I'd like to offer prayers for a friend of mine, Richard, who is undergoing treatment for cancer. Um, are there any other joys, celebrations, concerns anybody from here in the congregation would like to offer? Yes, Judy. Beautiful, so Prudy's doing much better then. Oh, thank you for sharing that. All right, so she's on our yellow list. We'll keep that as a Thanksgiving idea as well. Anything else, anyone? Any joys, celebrations? Okay, we, we got Jack Lawrence, and we're very happy for that, and we're looking forward to his baptism, so a joy would be Jack Lawrence. And hearing and seeing no others, let us turn to our yellow sheet, and we offer our prayers off of here by reciting the names, but only the first names. So let us pray for... Alan, Alice, Anne, Antonia, and family, Art, Barbara, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Frank, Frank, Grayson, Hayden, Jeff, John, John, Kathy, Kevin, Lauren, Marcia, Martha, Mary Jane, Michelle, Mike, Paula, Pauline, Prue and Bart, and family, Sabrina, Sandra, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And may we now just turn inward for a few moments of silence in the midst of our public worship to offer God those prayers that we just choose not to say out loud. So just a few moments of silence. God, whose care for us is never-ending, feed us today as Jesus fed the thousands long ago. May we hear Jesus' voice of compassion as they once did. May we marvel at what Jesus makes possible in us and then in us and through us the whole world. Share with us the spiritual nourishment we need to enliven our faith and to fortify our commitment to live as followers of Jesus. Multiply among us the food of your word, so that as we are fed, we may then be eager to pass on your gifts with a transforming generosity of spirit. Hear all of the prayers that we have shared with you today at worship, whether said out loud or silently, and answer them as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we all now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> God has created a world abundance where everything that we ever could need is there if we would but share. Yet the sad truth is that many do not share in this bounty and the gifts of nature are exploited rather than sustained too often. But Jesus calls upon us to care generously. And as Jesus accepted what was offered in the wilderness, blessed it and then fed thousands, his church asks for our offerings so that blessed by Christ, we may accomplish wondrous things still today. 
Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. And we will accept your donations now, but if you are joining us at home or later on at FCAT, please know that you can also share your offerings through the mail with us. However you do so, it is appreciated. Accept, O oh Lord, these gifts now to be placed in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. As already mentioned, we will be sharing the gospel of Jesus' miraculous feeding of 10,000 people. So when we give to God, no matter what we give, God can transform that gift and make it into something wondrous and miraculous, whether it is just by divine touch or by inspiring us to be better people. So we continue to thank you for supporting this church and may God bless you for your generosity and may God bless these gifts so we may continue to do his work from the youngest to the poorest to all of us so that Jesus may always be heard in this community. In his name we pray, amen. So I'd just like to let you know that we're going to have a little bit of a change since there's no kids downstairs in Sunday school. We're going to have the gospel reading, the sermon, directly into the baptism, and we're going to skip over the communion hymn and then go directly to communion. And today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion upon them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages to buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They need not go away. And he said, You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides the women and the children. So we're going to, because of the clock, we're going to have an abbreviated sermon today, but I, I do want to share some things with you anyway. 
So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Last weekend, Sharon and I, we went over to the Emily Dickinson Museum in Amherst. And if you've never been there, it's well worth the trip. Uh, we took the guided tour. I'm no poetry fan. Uh, I don't really get poetry. Um, you know, if something has to be said, I don't know why they don't just say it and make me work through the poetry. Um, so I don't really read Emily Dickinson. I know she's famous and I know she's really talented and I appreciate that. And so we went to her uh, house and we saw the tour and it's extremely interesting. And the first thing you see in the guided tour is these formal portraits of her mother and her father. And so the father is this very well-to-do lawyer, uh, very strict looking gentleman. And his mother, her mother, is also kind of strict looking. And I thought it was kind of cute. They said that um, the husband on their wedding day gave to his wife a beautiful wedding day present. And the, the beautiful wedding day present was a book called The Frugal Housewife. And so what he wanted her to do was to run his house as cheap and as well as possible. And that's how they began their wedded life together. So that's Emily's mom and dad. And I'm sure there was a lot of love in that house, but it wasn't like a boisterous love. It, it wasn't like a child, you know, screaming and shouting for joy. It was a strict kind of love. And so they were also Calvinists. And I don't know if you know what Calvinists are, but uh, Calvinists are, are really strict Christians that Calvin believed in predestination. Calvin had so much respect for this idea of God being all-powerful and all-knowing that Calvin said, God knows what you're going to do before you freely choose what you're going to do. He doesn't take away free will, but he says, I know what your free will choice is going to be before you even know what your free will choice is going to be. And so as soon as you are conceived, God in heaven knows whether you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can be as good as you want. You can say all the prayers you want. You can be as generous as you want. You can plead with God Almighty, but all you're going to get is a stone face in reply. God does not care. You are going here or you're going here, and it doesn't matter what you do. Emily, with her strict parents and this kind of strict religion, in her upstairs bedroom that we got to go into, you could look out the window and you could see the first Congregational Church of Amherst where the family worshipped. And she could see the building. She could hear the bell saying, it's time to go to church. She could see her family formally walk out the, the front door, down the sidewalk, across the street, and go to church. And Emily stayed home. And Emily stayed home because she didn't find anything of value in a stone-faced God that didn't care what you did, already made up his mind about who you were going to be, and she got nothing out of that. And she didn't get anything out of sermons that were talking about a fearsome and awful God that she just stayed home. And because she stayed home, she wrote poems that the whole world seems to enjoy. Maybe not me, but the whole world seems to enjoy. And so she found God in another way because she struggled with the God of the stone-cold face up in heaven. And so we, hear, we already heard the story about, you know, Jacob. I don't know if you remember a while back, was it last week or the week before, about Bethel, the house of God. Jacob is fleeing from Esau. And as he's fleeing from Esau, he's terrified. He doesn't know what to do. And we heard in, the, in that story that God stood beside him because he needed that support. Now he's gone off to his family, his mother's family. He's got his two wives, his two concubines, his 11 sons, and he's heading back to Esau. And he's been transformed. And God needs to convince him that he's a different person. So at Peniel, God struggles with Jacob. And the two of them wrestle throughout the night. And so this is story, not history, but the message is beautiful. They struggle throughout the night. And he says, you know, as dawn comes up, God has to go. You know that, that kind of supernatural idea that as soon as dawn goes, that mysterious has to depart with it. And so he says, let me go. And Jacob will not let go. And so as he will not let go, he says, I want your blessing. And who are you? He says, I will not tell you my name, but I will bless you. But since we know that he calls the place Peniel, face of God, we know that he's struggling with God. And God changes Jacob's name. He says, now you're Israel. And Israel in Hebrew means God fighter. Struggle throughout the night with God, wrestling with him. You are God fighter. 
And that was not, that was not an aspersion. That was not an insult. He says, you, I, I honor and I respect that you struggled with God. You struggled with me because something was not right and you, you challenged me and it became better. And so, you know, that, that idea of struggling, Sometimes we think of God that, you know, you either take it or you leave it. But I think God honors this idea of God fighter. That if there's something that doesn't sit well with you about God or church or religion or Bible, struggle with it, but stay with it throughout the night. Don't give up when things just say, I, I don't understand and this doesn't make any sense. Why God? How can this be God? Instead of just giving up, struggle with God through the night. Be the God fighter that changed Jacob into Israel. Paul says, we're the new Israel. We're the new God fighters. Don't give up on God. Life is not always just this straight, even path. Sometimes there are bumps. Sometimes there are chasms. Sometimes there are washout floods. And God says, struggle with me through the night, and we'll get there somehow, some way. Just don't give up. Be a God fighter. So with that beautiful idea of a God fighter, <laughs> let us now transition to a baptism. All right, so we invite Jack Lawrence to come forward. And I do believe that all of you should have a baptism insert in your bulletins. All right. There's the man of the hour. And do we have our sponsors? Come on up, sponsors. Beautiful. And you guys probably want to face your family, I think, for this. So how about if I get over here and you guys face out that way? All right. So the sponsors are Scott and Bree. And so we welcome you guys here because your job as sponsor is to make sure that the parents, whenever they need help, to make sure that Jack Lawrence is A-OK -okay physically and spiritually, you're there for them. And so the congregation as well. We don't do this in private. We do this as part of our worship because we want to make sure that Jack Lawrence knows that he now belongs to a community of God. And so you also have a responsibility to the family and to Jack Lawrence, and so that's why you're included in this service as well. Okay, all right. So they were bringing children to Jesus that he may touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, saying, Congregation, And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. And the sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only for us, but also to the children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. You guys don't have a sheep, do you? Oh, you do? Okay. So to the parents. Oh, you got, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, there we go. Oh, Dad. Okay, you got stuff going on today? Yeah. All right. So, Christopher and Eric. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? And Christopher, Erica, Scott, and Bree, do you promise to the best of your ability to help this child to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian home so that he may affirm his baptism? We do with the help of God. Okay. They're going to need it. <laughs> to the congregation, 
Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism, do you, who witness and celebrate this sacrament, promise your love, support, and care to the one who is to be baptized? Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ. Create new life in the ones who baptize this day, that he may live and rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Amen. Okay, Jack Lawrence, why don't you come on over here a little bit closer? How do you want to watch? Okay. Hey, you're taking my job away. <laughs> All right. Jack Lawrence Cook, you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Okay. Let us all now pray for Jack Lawrence, baptized today. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus, your Son. Bless Jack Lawrence now received into your church. May he be filled with joy. And may he always know and trust in your care and your presence. So here is Jack Lawrence's baptismal certificate. Okay. So um, mom and grandma sing the choir, and I think we got a choir member coming up. Yes. <laughs> and this is from our chapel quilters, church group that makes quilts. And they want you to consider baptized, so here you are. And they want to see a well born. Okay, God bless guys. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we are now going to move directly to our sacrament of communion. I do believe that you all have a communion insert in your bulletin. And please know that we practice open table which means that even if you're not a member of this church or any congregational church, any United Church of Christ, that according to the dictates of your own conscience, you are free to accept communion with us. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The Gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene. On that same day, he sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. For this table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day, when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us. And with your daughters and sons of faith in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, of all your mercy speaks of your glory, of God the Most High. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, we remember that in the night of Jesus' betrayal and desertion, that Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the cup. May we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And as is our tradition on a Communion Sunday, printed in your bulletin is our hymn of closing, Shalom to You Now. Thank you for coming out on this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope the rest of your day is just as blessed. Um, I will be gone next weekend on vacation, and so I'm not sure who will be covering here, but I'm, I, don't, I don't know, is it Reverend, Reverend Linda? That makes sense. So Reverend Linda will be with you, and I know that that's going to be just a wonderful service as well. Um, so I'm going away. I apologize to anyone who has outdoor activities planned for next weekend. I'm going to the beach. It's going to rain. Uh, nothing I can do about it. It's just going to, that's the way it is. So I do hope that you uh, plan something for an alternative as well. But I will be with you in spirit. Because even though I'm on vacation, I will be at the York Congregational Church next Sunday. And I hope you don't have to be a minister to realize you don't have to take a vacation from God. This is not painful. This is not work. This should be fulfilling and meaningful and joyous. And so I do hope that you find church to be just that in your lives as well. Let us now share in our benediction and then in the congregational response. Let us go out to wrestle with God in the world this week. Those things that trouble or confound us, let us be strong enough in our faith to ask why they have to be this way. And then let us struggle with our faith to find better answers. God has fed us in our time together at worship. God also bids us to welcome others into the community. And Christ commands us still, give them something to eat. May our church fill us and other seekers with spiritual nourishment, and may this inspire us to feed the hungry through acts of Christian charity. And in this spirit, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord among all whom we may meet.